in today's era you have plethora of resources everyone is selling their courses you have free courses course era is full of whatever part you're part of maybe machine learning ai web development back end engineering you just put a term and you have thousands of results and nowadays people get overwhelmed by the amount of knowledge that internet has to offer and you don't need to consume it all uh, and that's the point you need to see what works best for you because knowledge is i guess in three years has this knowledge har jagah aapko jahan se uthana hai aap batar sakte ho so that is the era we are living in and mm-hmm. uh so i was fortunate to be uh, guided by some of the brightest mind who understood what nature i have towards learning and uh, they guided me before placements when i was uh, uh, in the campus placement time they guided me what to study how to study how to prepare what uh, in what sort of way do you answer those questions even if you're not able to answer how do you navigate through those situations uh first of all uh, thanks a lot for uh, taking out time and uh, joining this call in the mentor talk series that we do at preplace uh, i'm sure we will have an amazing valuable information session uh, for all the people who will watch this uh, uh, video so let's get started uh, kanish can you uh, go ahead and sort of introduce yourself and tell us more about your career journey Yeah. So, hey everyone, Kanish Khan on this side. I have been in this industry for more than five years now, and I'm currently working with Apple. I started my journey with Oyo, and that was my first job straight out of college. I secured internship, and then I converted from internship to full time. I was there for around two years, including internship, and then I moved to Apple during the whole COVID fiasco. and uh, yeah i think the journey has been very exciting i started from one of the most uh, hyper growth startups at that point of time and went into working for one of the biggest companies in the world so yeah i would say it has been very challenging as well as very fulfilling uh, to name it in two words per se that's that's amazing so uh, let's like break it down uh, and understand your journey so how did it all start like uh, did you get placements directly from your college or how was your first step into the industry yeah so i think oyo was the first company that visited our campus okay. and i still remember that phase of you know being very uh, nervous being very excited and uh, you know just all sorts of emotions running through when you are sitting for a campus placement that to for the first time and uh, yeah so that was the first company that visited our campus and luckily enough i got through and uh, more one fact of say i was the only one that got through so okay. <laughs> that was even more interesting and uh, yeah i i think my last semester was with oyo only where i worked as part of consumer web team so at that point of time oyo rooms.com who i visited that was a team that i was part of that handled everything the consumer mm-hmm. flows and yeah, i was there with the same team for whatever time i was at with oyo so mm-hmm. started from campus placement i got there learned a lot uh, many 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 challenges when you work with startup get to and the was the beneficial part is you get to learn uh, learn a lot mm-hmm. so i did had a good gpa i had a gpa of over 9 in my college Okay. Uh, so you were studious, yes. Yeah, you could say that if you want to put me in a bucket. But more importantly, rather than just going into theoretical, I did build a lot of projects when I was in the college. Hmm. Uh, I had unpaid internship uh, when I was in after second year, hmm. and then I learned a like that was the point where I got into front end development per se in that internship, and then. I just explored it during my college semesters, building stuff there and there. Even if it was a very crude website or application that only I used, but I made sure that I'm building something apart from learning the theoretical knowledge and you know cracking DSA and stuff. Hmm. Got it. So uh, were you sort of already ready when during the placements? Like, did you do a lot of DSA? Did you 
do a lot of heat code or like how were you able to sort of crack the interviews during your campus placement yeah i think uh, so i to be very honest i was never into cold dsa during my uh, so i have always observed there are two set of people in the college one who are core dsa they would do hackathons and core challenges second mm-hmm. one would be into project developments and they want to uh, try out new technologies build stuff around i was into the second part and i knew that i had to go into the first part if i wanted to crack something so during my i would say six no uh, fifth semester i started digging into dsa doing uh, at that point of time lead code lead code was not something that i was very well aware of we used to do code chef that was super popular at that point of time correct so, so yeah i am from that generation if that makes sense yeah, <laughs> so, yeah during that point of time i started doing code chef uh, i started looking around learning understanding uh, dsa and you know looking for uh, past questions what companies generally ask from campus placements but i think the for campus placement on a dsa is not enough you need to be very strong in core fundamentals also especially if you are from cs background hmm. uh, so that was something that i also focused on along with dsa of course like operating systems computer networks dbms a uh, very very popular topic that often or not get asked in campus placement interviews hmm. got it so coming to your oyo journey like what was a, a core Uh, projects that you were working on like in your core expertise so my expertise was at point of time was and which still is full stack development with more heavier on the ui front and uh, projects were like crazy there so i mean we were as i mentioned we were part of hypergrowth so we were delivering features week per week uh, and uh, yeah there was huge potential in the business and then uh, came to the tech uh, responsibility of delivering those on the business problems oh. so and the learning that i got so i got to work with so many tech stacks in a short amount of time and oh. that was something that i really appreciate uh, and advise uh, people who want to start their journeys i always recommend that if you can pick up a starter startup as your starting point that would be very beneficial in a long run because you get to play around a lot mm. uh, and if you get that in your mnc then it's like best of the both worlds but generally what i have recognized or believed is that mncs are a bit uh, stable they want stable tech stack they want uh, established uh, development patterns startups are you know very flexible with it so they would rec- they would let you but again depends on the company and the team that you're part of i was luckily part of that team which allowed me to play around a lot with technology and i'm that sort of person who wants to experiment a lot <laughs> if anything new comes up i want to try it out and then see how the results are so yeah in that sense i think uh, the more challenging projects i got the more learning i got with it and i was fortunate to work with some of the very brilliant minds in the industry and uh, at that point of time i worked with them different companies also we had some sort of uh, a project going on very needed collaboration with uh, companies across the globe per se when we were expanding so yeah i think that was a very uh, you know that was a turning point in my life where i got to learn a lot in a very short amount of time i think uh, so cracking apple was one of the most challenging uh, phase of my life that i've been through it was uh, spanned across multiple months the, the okay. process because i asked them for time because once you get short list you don't want to go half footed into it you and i think all the good companies understand that and they let you have that time whatever uh, i mean obviously not stretching it out too much but yeah whatever time you ask for and as i mentioned i was never into code dsa and uh, all the mncs and now all the startups do expect you to be very good at that so yeah i did uh, ask them for some amount of time to put my best foot forward and uh, yeah due to that i think it took me around a month and a half for the whole process starting from the first call to the last one and then uh, i got into learning more and more depths of dsa and uh, getting a grip on my domain knowledge like what was the entire duration of preparation for you so i started my uh, preparation 
around two months back before getting a call from Apple. Okay. But that was more of a casual mode. I'm like, I want, I know I want to switch. I know I'm looking out, but uh, am I being very uh, serious about it? Maybe not. So that was like. You know how you start. You feel like now it's time to move on to the next company. So you start looking around. You say that okay, let me pull up my old books, see what I need to brush up on, and then you do that uh, like maybe an hour a day or two hours a day. But when you get serious about it, you start getting calls. You go into that mode where you want to grab, when you want to learn, and then uh, get prepared for interviews in as short amount of time as you can. so that okay. uh, you understand that you're not missing out on the opportunities that you got mm-hmm. uh, so yeah i think whole if i talk about from starting my preparation to getting into the company i would say it was around 3 3 and a half months of duration hmm got it but what was sort of the expectation level and the interviewing level uh, at apple yeah i think uh, so it actually depends from role to role to be honest so let's say uh given my past experience that i had with oyo and the expertise that i had in most of the companies would be uh testing you on both that is data structures and your domain knowledge so mm-hmm. let's say if i was working on javascript for uh, i mean that's all that i've majorly worked on so th- then you need to be absolutely best in what you do and how you deliver and that should reflect in your interview skills as well maybe you are very good at uh, converting those problem statements into tech deliverables but if you're not able to communicate that to the end interviewer then they will not know how good you are so okay. that is applicable for all sets of interviews with mncs it just it gets the number of rounds may increase the expertise that they require okay. you maybe more in each maybe you rate yourself 3 out of 5 but they want 4 out of 5 okay. so uh, on those sorts of lines Uh, of course uh, dsa is required almost everywhere so you need to be good at that but i would say for front end development roles for some companies they may not be absolutely 100% about it even if you don't know let's say graphs or those tricky dynamic programming questions they would be okay with it but if okay. you don't understand how browser works or how your rendering patterns work how javascript is you know playing around with your dom structures and how to optimize those that would be a big uh, no no for them hmm. so yeah th- that was majorly what i was also tested on uh, mm-hmm. and luckily enough i pulled through god god yes so i have a lot of questions around uh, what should be the road map what things different should be there but before that i'll just finish uh, on the section about you like currently uh, now after like reaching to apple and being in the industry for Uh, many years you are now sort of doing mentorship so i would like to understand like why as a person does kanish believe in mentorship and uh, spend valuable amount of time in mentoring people yeah so i think it goes back to as i said during campus placements and then uh, even after when i was at oyo uh, when especially so there are couple of points in every individual's life where they feel lost in their journey i mean mm-hmm. in today's era you have plethora of resources everyone is selling their courses you have free courses course era is full of whatever part you are part of maybe machine learning ai web development back end engineering you just put a term and you have thousands of results and nowadays people get overwhelmed by the amount of knowledge that internet has to offer mm-hmm. and you don't need to consume it all uh, mm-hmm. and that's the point you need to see what works best for you because knowledge is i guess in three years has this knowledge har jagah aapko jahan se uthana hai aap batar sakte ho so that is the era we are living in and uh, so i was fortunate to be uh, guided by some of the brightest mind who understood what nature i have towards learning and uh, they guided me before placements when i was uh, uh, in the campus placement time they guided me what to study how to study how to prepare what uh, in what sort of way do you answer those questions even if you're not able to answer how do you navigate through those situations hmm. i think that is very crucial because no one expects you to know it all but uh, if you're able to deliver a sense that you are someone who is of keen nature who wants to learn and then make up for it i think that is something that everyone appreciates 
Hmm. And then even during when you go into the corporate world as a fresh or even as an individual, you want to understand how to make the best impact in that company they're a part of. So you do need those uh, key points. You need someone to look up to who can understand you, who can guide you at those stages of life. So hmm. let's say I got into OYO. Now, OYO is a, when I joined, it had any and every opportunity that anyone can grab. So how do you pick one? How do you, even after picking one, how do you excel in it? How do hmm. you make sure that people see your visibility are seeing your work that you're delivering? Because once you get into corporate, everyone is working, right? I mean, everyone is getting paid. Everyone is doing their work. But how do you stand out of that crowd of, let's say, thousands? How do you get that uh, visibility in your leadership team that, okay, this guy is some, someone who can, you know, whatever you give him, he will deliver. He is doing absolute great work uh, to the business. So I think that is something that I believe you need someone as, a, as an individual who is just starting out in your career to guide you to maybe give you those key pushes that okay you can do it this is the way forward for you so oh. yeah, that is something that i was fortunate to got but now when i see as i said there's a lot of information but people are still lost so oh. i believe that mentorship is a way that i believe i can understand the nature of a person oh. understand what they're looking for what their expectations are what their goals are and maybe help them out and be upfront with it. Okay, if I feel that this is not my cup of tea, then I would say, okay, there is better someone out there who is who will be able to help you. So mm-hmm. I believe you all the best. But if I feel that this is someone who I can absolutely help with, then I go miles and above to do that for that person because I have been lucky enough to achieve that. Hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I so much resonate with what exact things you are saying. There are infinite number of unknowns in the journey today and there are also like infinite number of resources you don't know which to use to fill out which unknown so like you definitely uh, the belief system of yours for mentorship is really amazing 